Hello everybody and welcome to another PMP end of month review. What is this? Well, this is where we get together and discuss all the submissions to the Painters Motivating Painters Facebook group monthly review event. Uh, we each month we invite our painters if they would like to submit one and no more than one uh, image uh, into here to be uh, reviewed and to give feedback. Um, they have to post what they're working on and ask for targeted feedback. Uh, this month, as always, we have quite a lot, so I'm going to try to move along as quickly as possible here uh, and answer the questions. If you'd like to join us on your personal hobby journey, we'd love to have you. The link is down in the description to join the PMP. We love uh, painters of any level of skill, from people just starting out to longtime masters. So, uh, with that being said, let's uh, let's get into it. So, we start out here. Uh, I actually already got it up. We start out with Robin, uh, who's working on some non-metallic metal and says that he's not sure about uh, whether or not it works. And, and yeah, it doesn't. And your, your issue here is a couple different things on the non-metallic, but it all boils down to not enough contrast. Uh, with the gold, we don't have the reflections hitting in the right places. Uh, and then, like that is to say, the light here seems to be coming more directly from above, yet I don't have that light being reflected here. It also doesn't go high enough. So as always, I'll be referring to highlights in a five-point scheme, one being your highest highlight, five being the lowest, three being the mid-tone. So you don't have enough two and one. Uh, you also need to make sure that the edges are popped out and all of those are bright where, wherever possible. So for example, all in here, the edges of metal catch light. Down on the axe, which is the other thing he had a big question about, um, some of these little lines in here, um, you want to make sure that whenever you're doing a light line, it's very sharp, it's very thin. So we need to get that paint thinner and more precise. You can always come back with another paint like in the darker crevice there or the crack and repaint that black, but it needs to go up to white and come back in. With a more round-ish shape like this, I understand it's not actually round, it kind of has a diamond pattern to it, but you have to have, in the same way this transitions from mid to light, this has to transition from dark to mid. Um, you have to follow the same things around to capture reflected light. Okay, And on the axe head itself, we just need this to be capturing more light going up higher. You may also want to think about things like interference colors, but again, you don't have enough two and we don't have enough one. The edges all need to be caught. The edges need to be real sharp, real bright um, to sell that effect. So there you go. I hope that helps. Okay, next up. Uh, Bartas, uh, first unit of Pestigores, little oil painting, uh, looking for a good tabletop standard. Yeah, I looked over these guys, and honestly, Bartas, I mean, I think you're using the oil paints really well. Um, things look smooth, don't look over overdone in any way. And if, you know, you're going for a tabletop standard, uh, I think you absolutely achieved it. These guys look great. Um, you know, certainly there's probably some more stuff we could do. We could boost some contrast here and there, especially on some of the leathers and, and mid-tone colors. We could smooth out some elements. Um, but I mean, they are pestigores. They're meant to look a little rough, a little dirty. So I think it works for me. Um, I think these guys are fantastic. I mean, as far as tabletop goes, I think you're in the right place. So keep, keep plugging away at it. Oil paints are so much fun and I'm glad to see you're experimenting with them. So great job. Uh, and then yes, as well, I know you're sorry. Your main question was on the flesh and I think the flesh totally sells. I buy it completely. So I have no issues. You go into pinks, purples. You got a lot of good magenta in there. The highlights are high. The low lights are low. It works. Okay, Chris. Uh, this is ba basically says this is toward the top of his ability. Uh, similar sculpt and love to get advice on one to three things he could focus on. Sure. So um, on the eyes, try not to have them so black ringed. Like that's you want a dark ring around the eyes, but not that much. Um, that second picture is kind of out of focus. Um, the I do like the separation of elements. That's pretty decent here. Um, you want to work on when it, when it comes to skin tone. If you have female skin tone, we need to see other colors worked in there, more pinks and purples and things like that, especially in the cheeks, uh, here, uh, here in the eyes and around on the eyes up here. Uh, you need to be able to see eyelids if they're at all sculpted on the model, and if not, you kind of have to fake it by having this be lighter than this area here. Uh, and, uh, the, so, you know, more of those different, more, uh, variation of hue in the skin. And then I think probably, uh, if I was going to pick, you know, that's, I can't really read that one. That one's out of focus. Uh, but here, 
Um, I would say just make sure, you know, like if you're going to take a model like this and you want it to go up to a high level, think about adding texture through stippling or hashing to something like the dress to show a material difference there. So there you go. Those would be my one to three things to, to, uh, to point out. Interestingly, I noticed from your little picture, um, it's, I think it's you and your, uh, wife, in her wedding dress. So just like look at that wedding dress and you'll see the texture I'm talking about. That's, that's a great example of a highly textured dress. So there you go. Uh, okay, Travis, uh, first time sharing an ask from feedback, working on FEC, trying to nail the white skin, red wings, and the bases. Uh, sure. So I'll say the, the thing I like the most here is the base. Uh, you're, this is a very overexposed picture, by the way. You have way too much light coming directly in. Like these are really, really deep shadows. You need to diffuse the light you take a picture with. It can't be this, like you're shining a light directly on this guy. You can't do that. It's got to be diffused light because like all of this is just in crazy shadow. Um, and it makes it hard for me to see what's going on. So the, um, now as to the white skin, I feel like it needs more definition. So again, more controlled working of the volumes. So that is to say right now it's very white, but I need to see more variation of hue as we come down into like pinks or something like that around there to shape the volumes of those muscles okay um i think that's actually the number one thing i would tell you you know on the red of like the wings or whatever that's fine you could add things like texture we could we could have more contrast on there but i need more contrast of both value and hue on the skin itself to really separate the individual volumes it's, it's just hard to read right now because it goes one five like this line right here separating these muscles has no journey to it it is the brightest the darkest and they're smacked right against each other All right we've got it we've got to smooth that out so that's probably my number one thing okay but thanks for submitting travis and i hope to see i uh, can't wait to see what you do with it uh manis uh would bring us this pegaso ronin bust uh looking for feedback on the face uh the lighting on the face and the freehand sure um, I think the lighting on the face is good. You could go a little farther. I like the shadow. Um, you could pop up a little bit more of other areas and introduce just a little bit more shadow into some and into some areas off the highlight. Like your highlight is moving down here, which looks good. You could push that up just a tad more, and then we could bring a little bit more naturalistic shadows into some of the parts, especially where if the light is coming from this side so strongly, it's hitting here, then things like on this side of the nose and up here under the eye, things like that would be a little bit deeper and richer in their shadow. Um, if you look at like uh, Mark Masklins, that's probably a great guy to look at to see how he's done a lot of like the flesh work. Really, really look at some work of his and you'll get a good idea of uh, exactly how to go there. But I think for the most part, it's it's, uh, it's quite successful. You just need to keep pushing. Uh, keep pushing that contrast just a little more. Uh, now, as to the freehand, yeah, I like the I like the freehand pattern on the sort of silk piece here on the kimono. Um, and then as to this on the back, eh, it doesn't work as much for me. Um, the cloud, it, it feels a bit too simplistic. That's the issue. These things tend to be very artistic and the sort of like kind of cartoony sword with just like the two clouds it feels like there should be more going on there. Um, so I, you know, I don't, it's, there's nothing wrong with it per se, but like you got to watch out for doing just like the black side of a sword. Like that whole side is just black against black with a black hilt and then a black top. Like if you're going to do freehand, it has to be really distinguished and the elements need to all stand out from what they're against and from the other parts of the actual freehand. Like the blade needs to be different than the hilt and those things need to have edges and be clearly defined. So that's probably where I would give you the most pushback. So hope that helps. All right, next up, Nicholas uh, with his first submission. All right, well, hey, great. Uh, vibrant, he likes the vibrancy of the red, but it's too monochromatic. Uh, yes, I mean, my number one feedback for you here on this is it is very much too monochromatic. Um, you don't have enough contrast. I mean, that's the simplest way I can say it. Um, we need more, we need more contrast of both hue and value. So light to dark and color, like the red needs other tones worked into it. You need more volumetric definition of like the muscle shapings and things like that. So when I look at stuff like his arm and things like that, but the green especially is what's killing you here because you basically got two tones of green. 
I understand there's actually a little more in there, but it's just two tones and they're not really organized in any kind of volumetric lighting way. It's just recesses are darker, upper parts are higher, but that's it. There's nothing innately readable about it. So we need to create more of a, again, like there needs to be more of a lighting structure to it. Like this part of the top of the shoulder should be generally brighter than the bottom part of the armor down here and so on and so forth. And this part of the helmet, you know, you can bring this way up into the brightest here on the ridge, here on the side of the face and have some really popped highlights and that'll draw attention back to the face for you. Uh, same with the metal, by the by. I know you didn't mention it, but that suffers from the same thing. It's just all kind of gold. We need to work in more control of the lighting there. Okay. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Jake. Uh, next installment of his uh, Horacy Harry Hor <laughs> Horace Heresy era Luna Wolves. Wow, that's a that's a tongue twister to say, huh? Uh, feedback on obvious things. Uh, he's doing a sort of. He's mentioned he's doing a sort of dirty non-metallic metal. Um, he doesn't plan on taking it much further, and he's looking for advice on light light placement on the black trim. Sure. I mean, if here's what I'll say. I mean, you do you, Jake. It's it's a totally up to you. But if I was going to do non-metallic metal on a whole army, I wouldn't slap dash it. Like in that case, just use real metals. They'll look better, right? Now, that being said, the metals don't look bad. You're right. They need to be smoothed. Your light placement on the metals is correct. Um, so, like, just looking at this gun, it, it, they're, they're you know, in correct places. They just look really rough. I'll leave that to you and your tastes. If you like it and you'd rather go this direction, cool beans, I'm not going to tell you not to. Um, paint what you enjoy. Uh, now, as to the placement on the pauldrons, I mean, the issue is you're running, like, a very short volume. You just like have this tiny bit of white and it's just it looks really really rough right so as to where it is you need to move to two highlights instead of one i mean that's that's why it's looking bad um like the and, and they probably shouldn't come up all the way to white unless you're meaning for this to be uh non-metallic steel in which case you definitely need two light placements instead of one because you need a primary reflection and then a reflected light reflection um, and I would move them around. Like, theoretically, this is a line and this is a line is what I generally use. So, like, you have light coming down and cascading across the shoulder like this. So this should be highlighted. Uh, you might even want to put a small reflected light at the corner just to catch it out. Um, if you're going to do this, they should also all be edged um, if they're meant to be metal. Um, and that's part of the problem. When you're just kind of doing this like this, I don't know what's meant to be metal and what's meant to be just black. Right? Because you don't have a di clear distinction there. So that can be a bit challenging. Um, but yeah, I mean, you just need to go to two highlights. Like one should be up here and one should be right here. One should be right here and one should be right here. And those are representing like lights coming down, it's hitting the shoulder, it's bouncing up and then it goes here, right? Boom, boom, boom. That's creating this highlight as well as the, the it's natural light coming down on it. So this would get naturally brighter because it's hitting both direct light and reflected light. Same thing here on the ground. It's coming down, it's hitting the ground, it's bouncing up, bing. Over here, these are all direct in the primary light source. So there you go. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, uh, Adam uh, said, looking for some feedback on sort of the non-metallic effects, uh, mainly on this. Sure. So I'll say the weapons don't sell at all for me. It just looks like he has blue weapons. Um, like, I understand you're trying to go. I don't know if you're trying to go for like ice or energy weapons or something, but they're not they're not selling we need right now this is like all three and four and that's all we have maybe a tiny bit of two but we need to blow that contrast way out if you're really going for non-metallic metal with like a lot of blue infusion which i do kind of often um then we've got to blow this way up okay um so we've got to create more more contrast it needs to come up to like a near white it needs to go down to a near black and those need to follow like logical shapes in some way more. The axe head's going to be particularly tough because it's a really weird shape. Each one of those divots would certainly reflect, but as well, you'd have another reflection like down here on the backside. You'd have a secondary minor reflection here, and then you'd have one on the top in the middle to create like a, a, a light line across here. This one, if you're going to have a light here and here, then you need a light here on the backside, unless you're going to map this out or something like that. In which case, it could go very dark here along this edge to like slightly lighter on the bottom that the light is being caught. That would be a fine scheme too. But yeah, I mean, we just got to go way farther on the contrast. 
Beyond that, I would say, you know, with your edges on the black, make sure you go back and clean those up. You have a fairly monotone black. Your gray edges are very fat. We don't want that. You want those to be nice and thin. So come back in with your black and smooth along the edge. That's the number one thing that jumped out at me there. Hope that helps, Adam. All right, next up, uh, let's see, uh, Carl's. Uh, keep practicing NMM, uh, trying to get feedback on the model, which you try to get better at. Quick tips on how to approach non-metallic metal in an unusual shape, like the his little stick. Yeah, so let's look at this picture because this will this will kind of wrap up everything. Well, first off, number one thing is if you're gonna do non-metallic metal, it has to be clean. Okay, like for it to actually sell, it has to be clean. So we can't have stuff like this brown here coming around the front side. Okay, uh, we can't have things that are out of place and brush strokes that don't look that, that are out of place because that just it breaks the effect. You're trying to create this really complicated illusion of lighting. And when, when it's obvious that it's paint because paint's in the wrong place, right, then we lose it. The second thing I'll say is in some of these, especially down here on the leg and up here and here, we went too far and we're using, you're using too much of like a moon yellow, like a cold, bright yellow. You still need to stay in the ochre with just like a slight hint of the yellow. We went too far the other direction. We need to bring back in more ivory tones more bright tones and this is why it's really like non-metallic is not an easy thing it's really hard to sell the effect um so like you know you have to you you're need to come back now into more light the final thing i'll say is you've got to get all these edges highlighted um there's a lot of things in here where you've got edges that don't have a light on them they need they need crispy 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 clean edge highlights that's one of the things that will really snap and sell the effect Okay, so um, you want to make sure you go in and do that. Now, as to the rough shape or something like that, there's no one lesson I can give you that's going to help you do that, except to say that in general, you want to put reflection points in an interesting place, and they should generally be towards the middle. That's the best advice I can give you. So like if I were going to do this, I might have like one small reflection here, a brighter reflection here, and then go into mid-tone, come into shadow, come into shadow, that kind of thing. So I kind of have a 3-2 scheme here right um individual elements that stick out you need to make sure you have light catches and light points so at the bottom of the skulls the edge of the nose these little berries or whatever they are hanging here right um, each of these little things needs to have a little like dot on it where it's catching the light because it's little into like think of scales and how they would scintillate in the light right so the key with unusual shapes is if you have them all you know where they're sharp edges if all of those are properly edged then you're going to see uh a big difference in what you accomplish there. So there you go. Hope that helps. Okay, next up. Uh, Alex, I like it. Please don't write me a novel in the future. Okay, that's very nice, but I need less. I need the question you want to ask. I got a lot of these to do. I'm not reading a novel. All right. So uh, the he's basically saying over all this that he's looking for um, some tips on making the textures look like textures rather than sort of fuzzy um, and stuff like that. So in general, my answer is yes. One thing is your scale is like really, really small. That's why I don't like painting small. I don't paint 15. I don't paint 20. I don't paint 25 or even tw I even hate 28 true scale. Like I like basically starting at 32 because there just is a limit to where you, what you can do with it, right? Like you can only get your brush strokes so unbelievably small. Now, that being said, I think you did do a good job with the effect. Um, you know, your part of your question was, does it sell? And my answer is, yeah, for the most part, I think it does. The helmets do have that brushed aspect to them. The key is you just need to do more lines and make them thinner and then glaze them together, right? So this helmet does feel legitimately different than this one or than his breastplate. So like you're, you're on the right track here, absolutely. Um, same with like the, and the barrel itself feels pretty brushed. Um, so I think you're in the right place. It's just, it's, you know, it's tough because when you're doing this kind of like brush steel effect, you have to really just carry it out with slow color transitions and changes and then glaze a lot of it back together. But my answer is I think it sells. Now, you know, in this scale, the advantage is it is so small and you look at them from such a distance, it's going to tend to work. So don't get too caught up on what you're seeing from like an inch away at the army level. Um... Yeah, I think that's that's probably my best piece of advice. I think for the most part, where you've got the opportunity to improve is on things like the the little scales here. Um, the 
the reason I would say that is when you have these flat scales, you want to create like a light line moving across them. Okay. Where you're like, they're more in shadow and then you've got this horizontal light beam and then back to more in shadow. Think of it like a, a horizontal or sorry, a, um, a diagonal bar. Okay. And they're still all highlighted, but then on the lower ones, you're just catching the edges of the scales with like tiny bits of white light. And then the main part is just in a higher thing. So the difference between the total volume of the whole armor piece and the individual volumes of the little sections. So there you go, Alex. I hope that all helps. Great stuff. All right. Okay, so continuing on. Uh, next up, William Roberts saying, trying his hand at dioramas and looking for suggestions on viewing angles and shadows. Um, so first of all, the shadow line is way too strong. Like, uh, your light doesn't cast a shadow that hard. It doesn't go into deep black. There's still ambient light around. So you want like a soft shadow being cast underneath the light. Um, so, you know, you need to calm that down a little bit. Now, as far as viewing angle goes, like this shadow down here, same thing. They need to be a little more fuzzy. Shouldn't be that hard um, because your shadows, like if you, you know, unless you're like doing a shadow puppet thing. Um, but again, he, he'd have to be holding the candle like directly over and it'd have to be a super bright light source to get that level of crisp shadow, right? And the reason for that is because there's a bunch of reflected light bouncing around, right? So it's softening things. Now, as to like the composition of the thing, it's very challenging because right here, like this is straight on and I can't see anything. I can't see any of the figures, right? I understand this is a figure and I understand there's one here, but like I'm looking at his back and his hand. Now, when I turn it and look over here, I only see this guy, right? When I go this way, I kind of see just this big tree thing. And then over here, finally, I see the ghoul, right? But I can't see the other guy. So, like, we need to find a way compositionally to make that, like, turn it and angle it. Like, the, the right way to do this would have been that your front on angle and, and my points of visual interest are actually, like, oops, are actually, I don't even know if we have the right angle. I don't know if it's in here. Nope. It would have been from the opposite side. Yeah, this, kind of. But, like, tilt the wall and thin it out and this guy should be more facing toward the viewer so i can see him and the ghoul should be more facing toward the window like he's sneaking up to climb in towards you all right that's your compositional win there uh and then you'll get a little bit better on that okay um i love what you're trying with the lighting here it's really cool that you're doing all this with paint like i dig it i dig it dig it dig it i think that's wonderful um, I actually buy the light a lot more than I buy the shadows. I think you did a great job. I mean, you can't have one without the other. So I think you're really selling that. I think the, the color tones you did here are really on point. We just need to like soften all the shadows down just a little. The harder shadows of the hand are more appropriate because that's a more bright and sort of direct light source, meaning the moon, right? Which is a pretty bright thing, all things considered, especially in a completely dark night. Whereas that soft candle would be dealing with both interference, moonlight, and just it bouncing off everything in a small room. So you're going to get softer shadows there. Like, it wouldn't be casting this hard of a line on his, his weapon here or whatever. Okay? So, hope that helps. All right. Bethany, uh, just looking for feedback on the base. Uh, what's one thing you could do to improve it? I legitimately don't know if I have a good answer for you. Um... Oh, I do. I have one. I have one small answer for you. This is a wonderful base, by the way. This is so absolutely freaking glorious. Um, look at all this levels. I mean, yes, it's busy. Nature's busy. Nature has a lot going on. Uh, so I think this is absolutely wonderful. Um, I love, love, love all the different texture, the stuff, the sizes of things. The the it's great. Here's my small piece of advice: take a little bit of water effects. Uh, there's lots of different water effects out there. Vallejo makes some. Um, I mean, Woodland Scenics makes some, every company makes some, or you can just take some gloss gel medium and mix it with a tiny amount of like white paint or something. Um, and you have rocks in your stream, create a little, create rills in the, in the water, right? So like there's a big rock here that would be splitting this water. Give me some little rills. Give me some little, you know, where it's flowing up on the side here. Give me some little rills going down, that kind of thing, just to show disturbances in the water very small ones 
you know, so there's, there's like a texture and a flow to the water. That would be my one piece of advice for you. There you go. Fantastic face. All right, next up, uh, Benjamin, uh, just returning to painting some models, going for, uh, uh, going for sort of the nice, sharp, clean style. Uh, anything that, you know, pops out or needs to be sharper. Um, yeah, so the first thing that popped out to me was the, the freehand, because the yellow over the blue looks very green. I'm not sure if you're intending it to be very green, but it looks like the blue, like I can still see part of the, the texture underneath here, the, what you're, what you're doing underneath here. Um, so like, I don't know if that's intentional or not, but it's strange. It just looks like the yellow didn't have enough coverage. That's what it looks like to me. Um, the white parts also need more depth in some way. So like all these white parts, we need to bring them up into more highlights and kind of smooth them out. There's some of them where it looks rough, like it looks like a wash was applied and I can still see wash like pool and stuff like that. So it needs to come up and it needs some more soft, subtle shadows. If you're going for sort of the GW style on white, they like really soft, subtle shadows. Um, those are the two big things that jump out at me. The third thing would just be have this spear doing something. It's just all big, long black. That's it. It's not doing anything. There's no variance. There's no variance around the cylinder. There's no variance at the tip. There's just nothing. It's just a big black spear, right? Give it something to make it actually stand out in some way. So that's the only thing that jumps out at me. Hope that all helps, Benjamin. All right. All right. So next up, uh, Apollo, who brings us uh, his uh, Blood Angel here. And uh, he said he's looking for some feedback on the reds uh, and feedback on the NMM and the photo shoot. Sure. Um, so let me just talk about your photos. Yeah, I think your photos are fine. They came out really nicely, actually. I have no issue with them. They're, they're beautiful. Love the gradient. Yeah, very crisp, very clean, very clear. Beautiful photos, actually. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, as to the red, I actually think it looks wonderful. I don't know that I have... I mean, you might want to try one final very thin glaze of red over the white parts just to tint them slightly. They'll look a little more pink, but you could give that a shot. Like when it reflects pure white, it can be a little strange. You could also use like a near white to do those final highlights, like use a very pale flesh tone or, a, or a, even maybe a sunny type flesh tone. Um, just to kind of really, I mean, they'll still look very light compared to the red. But, you know, that could be uh, an item to go for. As far as the non-metallic goes on the gold and things, uh, the non-metallic seems to have the right level of gradient, good solid edges, um, things like that. Your colors look about right and they look in balance. They just aren't quite smooth enough in some of these cases. Like the sword here, there's a lot of roughness to it. Um, on the blend, same over here. We, like, we jump straight from like kind of a low two into the one like really hard. Uh, so we probably want to smooth some of that out. But overall, this is an absolutely gorgeous piece. Um, he looks wonderful. Uh, I really like how everything came out. The cloak is nice and soft. Uh, you may want to smooth down these edges just a tad more. Like we jump back here again kind of quick. Where I'm only, the only place I'm seeing troubles is, and, and not on the light reflections, because I understand your, your specular light reflections of these little white dots. I have no issues with those. It's more on some of the other highlights where we jump a little too hard, a little too fast, and we don't have kind of that blend smoothed when we move when we make the, the jump into the very opaque color. So uh, that's all that jumps out at me. But great stuff. Thank you for sharing. Okay, next up, uh, Alkin uh, bringing us a Korgorath. Um, you know, said it was sort of tabletop standard, and he kept going. Uh, general critique and tips about how you could have pushed farther. Sure, and I mean... Yes, you definitely need to push the contrast farther. So obviously you mentioned that you left a lot of gaps in here. Don't do it. It's so distracting. Do go back and fill those. You can do it with, you know, some matte varnish dropped really in there heavily and then you paint over top of it. I have a whole video on it. Um, I mean, where we can push the contrast is kind of everywhere. Um, we don't have enough contrast kind of in general around the, the, the creature. Whether it be the red and the muscle volumes, we need a lot higher highs and a lot lower lows. The bones don't go dark enough and they don't come bright enough. We're, we're way too in the mid-tone on all the bones. Uh, same with like the horns. You'd expect to see like the bottom of each of those sections get very dark and then come up to be very light. You could also add contrast through texture on those um, where we have, you know, scratches or hashes in there, that kind of thing. 
Um, so, I mean, the red and the bone are the big ones that jump out at me is, yeah, we just, we just need a lot more contrast. You know, working in deep blues, purples, blacks, dark browns into the shadows, and then working in, you know, like some brighter colors. You can push them into the orange. You can push them into the pink. It's fine. It can go either way. We just need to bring up those those highlights. So those are kind of my feedback. You, you definitely want to be pushing that contrast, especially up top. You know, a lot of the top of these volumes are actually darker as you have them right now than what the lower volumes are, and that's hard for the eye to read. Also, try to avoid taking a picture like this with the light being so direct. It's very hard to, to actually interpret what's going on because you're also using a satin paint you didn't mat out, so you want to make sure that you're using nice, diffuse, diffuse soft lighting. Okay, next up, uh, Ivan. Uh, Infinity Mac is his best work so far. Any lacking areas you should work on? Um, sure. So this big bone piece, um, much the same things I just talked about. Let's go around to that. Where's the, where are you bone piece? Do I not have a good picture of you? Nope. Okay, that's fine. This big bone piece, again, needs to have more controlled lower lows, higher highs. Same thing there, like I just mentioned. Um, smoothing out the contrast on the non-metallic elements, those need to be more smooth. Um, with the scratches, all of your scratches are the same size. I know that as a point of fact, they're probably slightly different, but they're not. Like, when I say they're different size, I mean one needs to look like this and one needs to look like that. Okay, that's a different size scratch. This is not a different size scratch. This is the same thing. Okay, so it looks really strange to your eye when one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of these scratches are all the exact same size scratch. 12, 13. Right? So if you're going to do this kind of battle damage, it has to be incredibly varied and natural. It can't feel like your brain made you draw the same size line every time because you got used to moving your brush like that. Right? And that's what you've got to change. Okay? It's got to feel more natural, more random. Now the little dots, I like the little dots. Those look nice. Um, on the stuff like the freehand on his shield or whatever, uh, over there on his, his right arm. Um, let's flip around. Oh. Sorry, this is the picture I want. You know, make sure if you're going to do something like this where you're kind of painting something on, it, it needs to look like it's either solidly there or not. Like, again, all three scratches are the exact same size. If you're going for claw marks, even those will be different because the middle claw is forced out and will hit first and drag. They also need to be, like, tighter and directional, um, that kind of thing, to, to read like claw marks, which I suspect is probably what you're going for there. Um... So, but, you know, if you're going to put paint onto the thing, like he has some kind of marking on it, then it needs to be either very opaque and look like it looks like it belongs there because it was painted in a, in a deliberate freehand style. Or if you're meant to make it look like spray paint or something that was just very quickly thrown on and rough, then you want to stipple around the edges so it looks rough in the right way. So it's really tricky to get that kind of feel correct. Okay. Uh, other than that, I'd say just some more glazes to smooth out some of your transitions. You know, I can see lots of transitions and roughness in the paint here. So you want to make sure you smooth those down. And that can just be done with some final glazes. So, hope that helps. Okay. Uh, Dave, uh, slightly converted Drica. Feedback for color choice and composition. Uh, he said, I'm sorry, intending it to be a competition mini. Um, sure. Well, we've got to go a lot farther if this is going to be a competition mini. Um, I mean, I this probably isn't a great competition mini. I'll, I'll let me just start you there, Dave. Um, not every miniature, no matter how well painted, is a great competition mini. And most of the time, stuff like this, I, I like, I wouldn't put this into a competition because you're very, very, very limited on textures, palette, stuff like that. Like, it's not doing enough, right? Um, with a competition miniature, you want to be able to display your, your ability on a variety of different surfaces, textures, and, and show something unique, right? This is very monotone, uh, and that's going to be a challenge for you. So I'm, I'm going to kind of take that out of it and just give you the feedback. Like, my big advice would be, you know, it depends on the competition. If you're talking about, like, a local game store thing, it's, it's going to be fine. But if you're talking about, like, a any kind of serious painting competition where there's a lot of people there, um, you want something that's going to stand out to the judges. And the reality is no matter how good you make a model like this look, it's going to be extremely hard. You'd need to use a completely different color palette where it's doing something really incredible and you're using like something with lighting or, or OSL or, or whatever, like something that makes it stand apart. Okay. 
So now that being said, where can we go farther? Sure. <clears throat> so the first things first is let's talk about the yellow beehives. Um, I think those are the strongest part of this, though I would still create some light lines on the bottom edge, just a small amount of uh, subtle edge highlighting on the lower end of the beehive uh, on each little hole uh, on the bone and the, and the wood and stuff like that. You're going to want to work in some kind of color there. It still feels very flat right now. Um, it all feels very like gray. So working in some actual tones, be they greens or purples or whatever you feel like, is going to be your best answer um, to get that in there. Okay. Um, and when it comes to things like this stick that's on the side of his head, her head, uh, it's very, very samey as far as the sort of color and um, stuff like that goes. This is a big bland piece sitting in the middle of this. So either make it like the rest of this wood and create the same variation of hue or uh, do something different with it. But if it's different, then it needs to stay in color balance, okay? So other than that, I just say like smoothing the paint. It looks unintentionally rough in some places, like on this, on this skull piece and stuff like that, on some of the wood where it looks like kind of we had wash staining or something like that. So you wanna make sure it's okay to have roughness, but it needs to be kind of intentionally placed where I would expect it to be in things like texture. So if it's wood texture you're showing me that's rough, okay, my brain goes, yes, that's okay. If it looks like just paint texture that's rough, my brain goes, ah, that's just paint, right? So that's the key with those kinds of things. So hope that helps. Very cool uh, conversion though. I like the big skull head on that. That's a nice trick. All right, so next up we've got Steven Banks uh, with the Nurgle thing. Basically he's looking for some feedback on the skin tone specifically. Working in purples and pinks, building on some feedback we've given in previous months. Yeah, so looking at that, I like the coloration we're achieving here. This is good. We've got some, we've got some good contrast of, of uh, hue in there. I like how that's looking. We may want to focus a little more on also having uh, some stronger contrast of value according to the volume. So pushing down the shadows here, pushing up the highlights a little more here, and while still working in those tones. It's tough with these big guys, especially when they are so textured like this. Um, one thing you can do as well is when you've got things like these veins or these pustules here is really make these a different color to break up that skin tone and then that lets you add in other volumetric highlights which then really takes the piece to the next level the key is when you've got you know you had mentioned in the in the comments that you know you wanted to move up to display quality so when you're wanting to do that something is you never waste space on the mini and large areas of the same color are generally the enemy um, in a display piece. You want to create variation. You want to keep the eye moving. And <clears throat> that's done through changes, through contrast. So like all these veins here, these pustules, stuff like that, have these be different colors, yellows, reds, you know, purple pustules, yellow pustules, whatever the, whatever the case may be. Um, one other small note when you're, uh, so color wise, we're good. Just to up the, the volumetric highlighting a little. One small note on doing the eyeball thing here like this. I see a lot of people do this with their Nurgle and that's fine. Um, you want to make the iris bigger. Um, it needs to take up most of the eyeball. Um, it, you also need to make sure that it's pretty perfectly round. Um, like humans are very trained at looking at eyes. And when they look off, we notice it even if it's the smallest thing. You also want to make sure that you have the right iris slashes and hashes going around there. And you want to make sure you have a light catch dot on it as well like they need to look like full normal eyeballs which means all the details uh so uh don't hold back on that kind of stuff it's a little thing but it's something people will immediately notice because humans are trained to look at eyeballs uh so they'll immediately notice if it's wrong okay so hope that helps very cool overall all right next up john uh first time posting wanting to practice some nmm and freehand sure um, so on the NMM, it's going to be much the same as I've said a couple times. We don't have enough contrast here, especially on the steel is where I notice it the most. Um, we're not going up bright enough. You also want to be careful not to keep it too even on something like the sword, on something like this spearhead here, the blade. Um, you know, you want to have these be of varying volumes. So in other words, widths, like have a thin highlight, have a broad highlight, that kind of thing, um, and vary those top to bottom. And that will be a, a big help there. When you look at this picture right here, though, um, you can see how with the gold we get up bright enough. And you know, like look at this whiteness versus over here, right? And that's what I'm talking about. 
Uh, it's the same with his horns. There's probably too much darkness in his horns. Um, we need to have more, like something in here is going to be reflecting light. Too much of this is too dark. Um, moving our way around the mini, let's get to the place where, where the freehand is. Uh, oh, slight note on this part real quick. This isn't how this would be highlighted. That's like, it just doesn't, that ends up looking like a bracelet. Um, this is a cylinder. Cylinders highlight vertically along from the source of the light, which is assumingly above. Okay. Um, so this should have a vertical, this should have vertical striping on it. Think like a space marine leg, right? This is the same shape. Um, <clears throat> now on the freehand, um, again, we need to just refine it. So a couple notes about freehand. One, it needs to take up most of the space. Don't leave this much negative space around it unless you're going to do something with that. Like if you were going to run a, uh, a, a pattern around the edge of like zinch runes, then this would fit perfectly. You'd be amazed how much that would change. Just if you put zinch dark speech around the edge here, it'll make this image look completely different. Don't leave empty space like that if you can avoid it. Fill all of the space, okay? Not literally all the space, but you get what I mean. Like, this mouth should go from edge to edge, basically. Um, or, sorry, not... I guess you have a Slanash rune under there. I apologize. So, um, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's dark speech being the point. Um, the uh, As far as this goes, it it's a good cartoony image, but the, the underlying NMM on this thing doesn't sell. That's the problem. Like, we covered up too much of the symbol. So, you know, the symbol, if it's going to be round, it needs to be more of it expressed down here. And this needs to be sharper, right? So you've got to bring this into very precise lines. Like, this needs more cleanup, basically, is what I'm saying. And then if we're going to do these dividing lines in it, where we're trying to show that the, the two-dimensional thing is three-dimensional, then it needs to have all of those elements. It needs to have a bright white line going through the center. It needs to have white outlines to catch the edge. Like, it needs to be non-metallic metal in the same way that you would do any physical piece of non-metallic metal, okay? So, there you go. I hope, that's, uh, hope that helps. Okay, uh, Mark, I've uh, been working on weathering and making uh, things look beaten up. Uh, what would I do to make the chest and gold elements look like more weathered gold? So, I like your battle damage. I think it's good. Um, the shiny is not too hard, yes, it, or not too, not too bad at all, sorry. Um, it is tough, is what I meant to say, uh, but it doesn't look bad. Um, the gold needs more contrast. I mean, that's the, the bottom line there. The second, like, I need more darkness in between the various gold pieces. But with gold, I mean, gold doesn't... Uh, gold, if it's traditional gold, doesn't weather. But that being said, I doubt they are actually having 24 karat gold on their, uh, their Space Marine outfits. It's just a gold-colored metal. So you can always use verdigris and stuff like that, um, and it'll work perfectly fine. <clears throat> you can also put scratches in it or anything like that that would normally be there. But if you increase the intent, if you increase the amount of purple, brown, and black in the gold, it will naturally look older and more weathered. So it's all about playing with the volumes. Okay. Now, one thing I would say is this guy's very beaten, but you want to be careful with combining beaten with this, like very stippled pattern it can get a bit messy and tough to figure out exactly what's going on because there ends up being so much information. It's kind of hard for your eye to actually figure out. Like right now, he's, he looks very pixelated. He's not, but he looks like it because there's so many little dots that are still visible. So either you've got to go like the Kirill Kanayev way where the dots aren't visible and everything is built from dots, or you've got to connect some of that and have some lines happening somewhere, right? Otherwise, it just gets too broken up. So, also, drill your gun barrels. You thought I wasn't going to notice. I do drill your gun barrels. Always drill your gun barrels. ABD, always be drilling. If you're not drilling, you're losing. Always drill your gun barrels. Um, it's a simple step, and it makes a huge difference. Don't spend this amount of time painting something and not drill a gun barrel. All right. So, that's my feedback for you there. Okay. Stu, uh, looking for general feedback and tips on secondary highlights. Sure. So the first thing that jumps out at me is the flesh isn't interesting enough. That's the biggest challenge. And, you know, there's been a lot of uh, pro painters who've tackled this model. My advice would be look at them, like, you know, just look at their images and look at how much they vary the skin tone, whether it be natural shadows that are, you know, held under his 
uh, on the sides of his torso and things like that, or whether it be the addition of reds and maroons and, and uh, um, sort of purple colors, those, those types of things. Uh, but I, you know, more of that is what we would need to see as well as probably a little more of like a tan sepia tone in there as well, all to set this off. Um, now as to the gold, it feels like it needs more, again, more highlight, more upper light, doesn't have enough one and two in it. Um, the shield on the silver is better. We're definitely running the correct number of volumes. Um, or sorry, the correct number of, uh, of values, I apologize. Um, but we don't have the smoothness of it. So I imagine you were also going for sort of that brush steel thing, that's fine, but you need thinner lines, more of them, and then some glazes to smooth them out. It's still a single piece of metal, and when you can actually still, like, it's a very fine line. You have to leave enough strokes to make them visible, but less so they don't look like brush strokes. It's sort of walking this, this careful balance. The light on this side of the shield's better. You did come up to some higher highlights over here, so I, I like that. Um, I like the reflectiveness of the gold on the shield more than I like it in the other two places. All right. Uh, good stuff. Okay, next up, Brett. Uh, first submission, pure oil paint. Looking for feedback on the non-metallic silver. Um, sure. So... I suspect we did this in oil paints in one pass, not two passes, because we don't have enough value contrast. And that's the tough part about doing non-metallic in oils all at once, is you have to you have to let them dry and then bring them back together. So again, same thing here. I can also see lots of places where we didn't get them blended together. So remember, you know, go watch the most recent Crimson Fist tutorial that I had. That'll really walk you through how to, you know, use oil paints on something like a Space Marine. When you're using oils, you always want to be making sure you're then going back in and doing the important step of smoothing them back out. They can be instantly perfectly creamy, but you've got to go back and do the work. The non-metallic, as far as it goes, it's the same thing. Again, we need more contrast of value, so we've got to take them up higher there. Uh, we need more ones and more fives. That's what we're missing in this. Also, you want to make sure you have your cleanup step. Like there's red sitting here on the silver. So when you're, you know, when you're... Uh, uh, finishing up at the end, the cleanup step is really, really important. You know, same up here where we've got some bleed over, same over here where we've got some bleed over. Like, cleanliness in the paint application can be something you do at the end, and it's a really, really important step. Because when each piece and part of the miniature feels separate from everything else, that makes the miniature feel very... Uh, it just has a much more... Uh, uh, that separation breads this feeling of cleanliness and accuracy to it. Okay? So, there you go. All right, next up, uh, Sam. Uh, feedback in general, mainly for the face and eye area, uh, and then tips for taking pictures. Um, my, and post-production, I'm, I'm not the best person to ask about photos, to be completely honest. I'm pretty bad at it. But my answer is always a black background. I think minis just look better in front of a black background because you can then sort of get the, the um, a sort of infinite background type of effect. Um, you want to shoot with a good depth of field, which means you need to be back far enough and not zooming all the way in, that kind of thing. Uh, your lighting looks good, though. It's nice, diffuse lighting. Uh, you know, only a little bit of shadow here. Um, so we probably want to tone it down a little, stop pointing it directly at the model, get it more in the area. Uh, maybe you have two light sources. It looks like right now you've only kind of got one, so you kind of want two light sources, that kind of thing. Uh, now, as to the uh, painting itself, the eyes and the face... Yeah, I mean, the face is a little rough. It, it needs to be smoothed more, um, so we need more, uh, you know, glazes put in there to bring everything together. The eyes also need to be, or the eye, I guess, as it were. He only has one eye. But we also need a little bit more darkness around the eye, as it were. Um, so just looking at this picture, which is a little more zoomed in on the face. Uh, I like your placement of the iris. I think that's good. I like the white dot. We just need a little more darkness around the eye to really set it aside. You do have one, a, a thin dark ring. Where I need more is a little bit up under the eyebrow itself and then down here on this side under the eye um, to kind of really give you that full uh, effect. But overall, it's good. With the face, I just think it's a, the, a question of a few more glazes and stuff like that to kind of bring the, some of the rougher blends together. And that, that is basically what you'll want to what you'll want to work on. Overall, very cool mini. Uh, I dig it. I, I, I hope to see the other uh, Efriel Tarn or whatever her name is, the other one. 
Okay, next up, uh, Courtney. Uh, overall, how could I make this better? Um, she's got some some good deep shadows. Uh, looking for desaturated colors that blend in with nature. Yeah, this is a really great piece. I like this a lot. I love the the natural tones to this. I think it works. Uh, yet again, you have a bit of like too much direct light on your piece in the photo, so you want to go for a little more diffusion. Um, but you know, that's, like I said, taking photos is like the hardest part of this whole hobby. I swear. Um, so I'm not going to beat you up about that. Um, just little things that I've noticed, like these feathers and these strands, you want to get in and do some nice thin lines on those, some little hashes, you know, make them feel apart from like things like the skin and the exposed more area here. You can do that by adding texture. Uh, when it comes to the wings, I like the, I like the sort of demon dots you've got going on there. I think that works. Um, and a couple of the wings, you didn't carry it down quite as far as I would imagine. So you could always take a few more random dots down in here, but I think it's a good look. Um, the wings are where I would say you also have the opportunity to work in more color. You did a great job working them into the body, but the wings themselves feel very samey with the leather straps being very similar to the bone, uh, here that's sort of holding the wings together, bringing down some soft, subtle shades like you did here in the skin into the wings themselves to more separate the shade and create that, that, uh, that tone I think would also be valuable. Uh, that's the number one thing that kind of jumps out at me there is the texturing opportunity and then more differentiation of the wings where you add in some soft colors. Could again be very desaturated greens or purples or maybe both uh, to just really kind of make them feel like they're a different, uh, materials maybe the wrong word, but they're a different, or different organic substance than the bones in between them, okay? But great stuff. Hope to see more. All right. Next up, uh, Matthias, basically looking for uh, for feedback on sort of conversion and and uh, building out something like this. So he has his little little thing for his, his uh, tomb, whatever this guy is, uh, Necron Lord. I don't know. So my biggest issue with it is this is it doesn't actually fit on the base. So I don't. I generally floating feet. Oops. Trying to find the picture where we can really see how much they're floating. There we go. You want to watch out for this floating feet thing. Like, it, this would feel better if they were up more and they were under it. So, like, when people are carrying something, I mean, think of, like, the meme of the six guys carrying the coffin. They're under the coffin. They're not holding it out like this, right? This is really hard to hold something. Like, if I held my water mug out like this, like, I could only do this for so long, and this is a pretty light thing. Right? But if I was holding it very close to me right here, I could hold it for a lot longer. I understand these are immortal robots, but human beings just, we like to, we tend to see things as being like this, right? Up underneath it. So bring those guys in, get them more up and under the thing, and then both their feet will also be on the base, right? You want there to be a verticality to it where it's clear they're really being supported, you know, under the weight of the Lord. Compositionally, it also works better because they he needs to be directly above them to sell the theme of the thing, right? And so if they're literally hunched and supporting him, it thematically sells it better than if they're kind of just like, oh, like it looks like they're kind of playing with it because it's too hot to handle or maybe too cold to hold. Uh, but we will have to call said Ghostbusters to make sure we're in control. So uh, that's my basic advice on sort of the composition of the thing. It's a cool idea. I love it. Um, I love the idea of them sort of toting this guy around. So I think you've, uh, you've, you've stumbled onto something really neat there. That's cool. I've never seen anybody do that. Okay, next up, Tom. Uh, general feedback on technique, composition, and color choices. Two things you did well and two things you could improve on. Hey, I like that. That's a good way to do it. We might we might put in the that that rule. That might become a thing. Like one thing you did well, one thing you can improve on. Maybe that's how I'll do this in the future to keep this moving along. Um, but at any rate, so here's my basic problem, Tom. I'll, I'll start on the two things that I I'm not sure about. This is the primary. I don't even know if I have it. Like this is probably the primary viewing angle of the model, probably because I can see all the elements. But he is really turned away from me. Like I can't see his face. So again, whenever you're doing these kinds of dioramas with walls, it's really tricky because everything needs to be visible. So you need to bring him this direction. Like he needs to rotate his face toward the camera. Okay. Um, so like that's my that's my sort of first thing 
that uh, that jumps out at me. It's like when I'm looking and actually taking in the whole scene, I can't see his face, and his face is where I want to look because the face is always the focal point of any scene, whether it be a single miniature or a diorama. You want to look at the faces. Um, I understand he's blind, but I wouldn't know that. Like, I can't see his little face wrap from this position, right? And that's a problem. Uh, the other thing I would tell you is when you're adding vegetation, tufts, and all of this stuff, do give some extra paint on there. Washes, dry brushes, make them also painted in acrylic. It's always obvious when I see this vine work. I have some of this too. Uh, and it's not been touched by paint. It just looks very different than the rest of the thing, which is all painted in acrylic paint, right? So everything on the model should be painted, uh, whether it be on the base or whatever. Now, as to the things I really like, um, the white, uh, the white jerkin or blouse, <laughs> shirt, top, whatever he has, uh, whatever it is, um, I really love this. I want to look at it in this in this black and white actually, because I think you achieve such a wonderful, soft, subtle contrast on it, and yet it really remains bright and feels white. It's great. This is really great stuff. Like I just love the subtle tones you worked in here. Um, I think it's just fantastic. So that I really dig. Um, I think that looks absolutely wonderful, natural, just fantastic. Um, the other thing I want to compliment you on is just the, the nature scene you created. Now, taking the paint tufts aside, um, I do love the way you've used your vegetation, your moss, your flowers, your tufts, all of different sizes, all in different ways, growing in exactly the kind of ways I would expect it to grow. It's fantastic execution on that. You, you stopped your brain from forcing patterns. Things look very natural. Things look very random, um, very organic. So that's really, really, really good. Uh, I enjoy that quite a bit and think you did a fantastic job with that. So uh, well done, Tom. Uh, hope to see more. Okay, next up, uh, I'm going to say Julian. Let's go with Aruda. Uh, first time posting, looking for feedback on the skin, the TMM, and just general feedback. Any tips on monster hair? Um, you still, I know you said that Pantene look doesn't feel like it's appropriate. It still is. It's still hair. And it, 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 like, it's still going to sell. Now, alternatively, you know, you can just highlight it in a more non-realistic but pseudo-cartoony way, which is you can have it get lighter toward the top. That's what you, I see a lot of people do with monsters. Nothing wrong with that. Perfectly reasonable choice. But the key is those nice, thin hash strands going all the way up the thing. Right? That's, that's what we want to focus on. Uh, now, as to the skin, um, the skin is good. It needs more tonal variation. Again, mostly variation of hue, but you can really see it when you go into the black and white. It's mostly the same color. We have some very slight variation, right? But not enough. Like, I need... Let me, I'll give you an easy example. This and this should not be the same color as this and this, but they are, right? They shouldn't have the same value, right? Uh, so that's the first thing that jumps out of me. Again, more, more, uh, mauves, more purples, you know, uh, colors like black leather from scale 75 are a great thing to do this kind of subtle shadow work with. Um, but anything like that. Okay. Now as to the face, again, it's much the same thing. We need to kind of control the light. I, it's all of his face has basically the same highlights and it's just recesses are slightly darker. I need more control around, even though he has a weird face, he still has like a zone that should be higher highlighted up here, you know, up here than what's going on down here in this area. And so working in that subtle shading, I think is going to do you a lot. Now the true metallic metal. Yeah, I like it. It's good. Nice soft rusts worked in. We could probably do with a, still a little more volumetric shading. Like this could feel a little darker and more matte than up here. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I think uh, I think it works better. I do like the texture. I like the effect. I like the rust. I buy all that. So that sounds good. Cool. Okay, next up, Matt. Uh, looking for some advice on how to make the blades more interesting as well as improve the TMM. Yeah, so I mean, the TMM, just it, it is very samey and flat. You need to treat the TMM like NMM with applying inks and shades and glazes to it of color and shadow and matte paint to control the light. Um, I have lots of videos on that. I would highly recommend you go watch them. Just, you know, go through my the Hobby Cheating playlist and look for all of them. Uh, there's like 175 and there's a couple in the 70s. It's something I talk about pretty often. Now, 
As to the blade, it just needs to come down more. Like, you need more contrast in it. That's that's all it comes down to. You went to the full orange. Slow, subtly mix in a little bit of uh, purple or maybe a little bit of black into that orange, and you'll get a nice deeper effect here at the very corners, and that's going to help it from being so overwhelmingly bright uh and and really like just taking because right now the problem is it's just taking charge of the whole piece like if you relax your eyes you don't really see anything except the blade right so getting that orange spread out a little more uh or desaturated i'm sorry if there's a place you could spread it out that would be even better like you did the eye which is good and this little thing on his belt i know this is blackstone or whatever this this thing is their little anti-psychic metal so you probably can't do it there well, like these little juicers that he has here, you know, those could also be orange. It's just something like that could add a little bit more balance to it. But bringing it down with this, uh, this soft inclusion of some purple and or black, and that'll desaturate the, the weapon down and make it feel a little bit less overpowering. That being said, I really do love how soft and subtle you were with it. I think it looks really good. Your your blends are nice. I think it's very effective. So uh, overall, cool, uh, cool Necron or in, Inquisitive something Sezrak or whatever his name is. Okay, Bill Bloop, ah bleep bloop, bringing us another beautiful piece. Uh, interested in a critique on the freehand gold on the dress? Sure. All right, so, bleep, I have only one piece of feedback for you on the non-metallic on the, on the dress. I think for the most part it works. I think we could bump up the white on the edge a little more and then have a little bit more clear black, so maybe like a tiny bit of cleanup. That's a minor thing. Here's my real thing. I don't love the highlight for this actually falling right here. I like this where it goes highlight in the middle, highlight at the end to create this nice corner piece. I dig that. That's good. Um, but this feels like it should actually be like right here. And then we should have it passing down into So basically five, four, three, two, one, two, tiny bit of three. And that's what I'm saying. I think it's just more visually interesting when it's in the middle, uh, when there's, when there's, more traveling in both directions rather than just a one-way trip. Uh, so that's probably my main thought for you there. Uh, overall, simply beautiful, as always. Uh, I, this is such a gorgeous army. I've had the the, uh, the good fortune to see this army, obviously pre neferata in person, and it's absolutely stunning. So thank you, Bleep. All right, next up, Scottster, uh, bringing us a dwarf. Uh, how the integration of the miniature into the scene, as well as your attempts at non-metallic metal. Yeah, so here's the first thing that jumped out at me. There's too much scene, okay, for this tiny figure. This needs to be shrunk to about 70% of the size it currently is. Um, you've got to watch out that you're not using, like, all of that extra scene isn't really doing much. You're not telling me much by making this big scene. If that was like a 54 mil scale dwarf or something, or he was, you know, much bigger, which is ironic, given we're talking about a dwarf, um, it would sell at the, in the, with this amount of size. But the problem is here we have too much going on. He feels like too small of a part of it compositionally, and he gets lost amongst it. Like, it's when I sit back, it's almost hard to tell that he's there, right? Because he's also in very natural colors. So let's go to the closer view. Uh, I do love the chunk out of the side. I think that's super cool. Um, I think that's absolutely fantastic, as a matter of fact. Um, I like the scene, as a matter of fact. I think it's really good. If you had, like, a party of dwarves, if this was, like, three or four dwarves making their way down as though they're sort of making their way to the, the Misty Mountain or whatever, uh, then I would be... I would love this. I think you'd be great, okay? So, um, it's just the issue that there's one. Your actual nature scene is, is really strong. Now, as to the NMM, the, I think you're running the right number of uh, values here, but we just need to smooth it out. Um, I like the colors. I think it sells okay. I like the integration of the blue. It's just not smooth enough. So I would work on some glazes and smoothing out your blends, and then, yeah, I think you're in a good place on that. So there you go. Hope that helps. All right, next up, Brandon. Uh, Convict from Nemesis. Uh, I was using more colors, Zenithal Prime before painting, tried to use the numbering system to shade highlight. Uh, sure. So, you, you know, he's basically asking for feedback on how to use the war colors range better. The answer is it's a great, great, great range for doing nice, subtle glazes and soft layers and stuff like that. And you don't need to stick to the numbers exactly, okay? So, like, 
but when I'm looking at something like him, what again, it's the same story with the skin, right? It's too much the same thing. So don't worry as much about the numbers. Worry more about stuff like, what am I adding in here? So like when I would, when I do my skin tone with war colors, you know, I use a little flesh three, I use a little flesh five for shadows, mixed with some, uh, I'm looking up the actual paint so I get it correct, mixed with like some purple four and five, maybe a little bit of like red four, very subtly thinned down for places. Uh, maybe I use a little bit of a brown glaze to create a tan sepia effect on the skin. And then I'm using flesh one and flesh two to do my highlights, okay? Um, the key with war colors is they're very much a paint for glazing. And so when you're gonna work with them, you need to be starting from something that has a nice solid base coat. I usually like to start by airbrushing them on, that gives me a nice solid base coat, and then I just work in glazes from there. That's where they're the strongest. That or feathering, so you put a nice little dab of that dark paint in the in the, you know some place where you want it, and then you just feather that gel out, just feather it right out. Um, you wipe your brush and you feather it right out, sort of a void blending style, okay? And that's going to do you really well as far as um, uh, as far as getting more mileage out of those paints. So hope that helps. All right, next up. Uh, uh, gurgly, gurgly, sure. Um, basically, some feedback on the non-metallic gold. Uh, sure. So I think one of the issues here is something I talked about earlier. First of all, I think this isn't bad. I think it's actually rather nice. Um, one of the problems I think we have is we don't have all the edges picked out as well as we could. Um, so I think more edges need to be cutting a reflective light. Some of them are really nice. Some of them need a little more work. Um, I do think you need to bring the highlights up a little higher. You had mentioned that in there. Um, I think a few of them, especially along the light lines, need to go up a little higher. But, you know, for the most part, I mean, the, I think that it it works. Uh, I think that the nicest piece is this down here. I like this piece on his chest. I think that looks really nice. I think when I look at, like, the gauntlet, there's clearly places that just need more light on them, like, that need to come up higher. These little round balls are okay, but then the bottom of the plates are all relatively flat and yellow. We didn't do the individual work there to like create shadow up here on the top of the plate and the light down at the bottom of the plate and so on and so forth, right? Like I need some subtle movement like that. So yeah, that's what jumps out at me. Hope that helps. Okay, next up, Terry, uh, general advice you can give. Uh, sure, so much of what I've said so far is gonna also apply here. Um, you know, when, when it comes to things like bone, don't just do the wash and stop. You need to go back in there and, and actually layer. And you need to apply more than one wash to create a transition of uh, contrast of value from this bottom of the horns to the top of the horns. The skin needs more work. It needs to be smooth. And we need more contrast of uh, both hue and value in there. I mean, you can see it when we, when we uh, look at that black and white photo. Sorry, there we go. Like I have the natural lighting that's being created and more or less those are my shadows, right? So I wanna make sure that we have more other tones in there. Um, a great thing to look at when you're doing, uh, you know, muscle men like this is just go look at Frazetta paintings. You know, just go look at, at, at Frazetta paintings, Conan, all that stuff, anything he was doing. Dude loved big, muscly, shirtless guys. And, uh, and, and it's, it's, you know, he was the master uh, of, of integrating hue and, and variation of, of value into those works through both hue and just lighting changes, okay? Um, so that's probably my biggest advice, what I'll tell you to work on next. Um, you know, same thing with the, the, the bone sword. You wanna make sure that's nice and clean. Again, each, the teeth should have some darkness down at the bottom and light up at the top. We wanna make sure we don't just have it look like that. I just washed it and stopped to look, okay? Hope that helps. All right, next up, Adam. Uh, so, Looking for help on the, uh, basically the non-metallic-ish plates, um, working on uh, the scales, general feedback and improvement. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Everything. All of it. Okay. We're going we're gonna to go to the one question format soon, rather than the, can you tell me 10 different things? Uh, but for now, um, I think the, the undershading and the glazing on the scales worked perfectly. I think that was great. No, no feedback. I think the turquoise armor works, but you need to do less. Like we've got way too many light lines in here. This needs to be like two, not three. 
and we need to smooth out the blends on them more, we're still jumping from like one, three, right? We're going way too hard, too fast. Um, but color-wise, I like it. Like you got the right idea. This piece works for me. The leg piece works for me. It's really this one that doesn't work. Um, Gareth uh, Nicholas painted one of these, uh, or Gareth Nicholas, sorry, um, painted one of these back in 2018. It's in Golden Demon because it won, so you could go look through that, one of the 2018 Golden Demons. And he used a very similar scheme. His is more blue than turquoise, but you could look at that, and that'll give you the exact lighting structure. Um, just a great piece to reference in general. Everything Gareth does is amazing, so I would highly recommend looking at his blog. Um, the uh, Now, as to the uh, gold, I think you can keep pushing it. More shadows. Like, this is better than last time. I can see the difference. We're making progress. More. I need more, okay? So keep pushing, keep pushing. Uh, we'll take a spin over to the freehand here as we as we sort of head out. Um, I think this is fine. Nice little starry galaxy thing. For the most part, this works for me. It's on a folded cape. Um, feels very painterly, uh, you know, very much like a canvas. I think that's okay for this effect. I don't have any problem with that at all. So yeah, that piece sells for me. I'm fine with that. All right, next up, uh, Juan Francisco Gonzalez Hidalgo, the best name in the PMP, uh, and, and a guy with a fantastic painting channel himself. Give him a, a follow. Check him out on YouTube. He's doing some great stuff as well. And he's just looking for some feedback uh, on uh, a couple different things. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll also, it, it is funny how big this guy actually is. So, you know, when I was spending some time looking at this guy, it is funny how big he is. Let's, let's go to the last picture because it's just funny to see him in scale. Oh, geez, he's that big. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you, you had it on the shield. A little, little varnish will make the paint stick. So, you know, sometimes you got to use a little spray on varnish or something like that, something heavy duty, and that'll kind of, that'll let your paint go. Like, you know that, so you don't need me to tell you that. Now, one of the things I would say is I'd love to see some more pushing of the red. I actually really like the shading on the chest plate where you come down into this nice, deep, wonderful shadow. And then I don't feel like I see much more of that in other places, like here on the side of his arm or here under this tucked away portion of his leg. It's a little bit here, but this, which is a higher up volume than this, this is more up and pointed towards the light than this, yet this is darker than this. Okay, so that's kind of the issue I'm running into there. My, my brain's trying to trying to reconcile that. So like more darkness down in here, more uh, application of, the, of those soft, subtle shades. But for the most part, I think this is great. The edges are super clean and sharp and smooth. I love the light catches uh, in the armor and I think on the, you know, the sword looks great. Overall, this is a fantastic piece, man. This is really, really good. I just, I dig it. I dig it so much. All right, next up, Cornelius, uh, first entry in the monthly review, uh, general feedback, color choice, skin, and overall appearance. Um, so the skin needs to be smoothed out. It's your, like, the blends aren't as smooth as they could be. You can also, with Tau, because they're uh, blue-skinned, you can use purples as in place of the reds, or you can actually glaze red and you'll get purple. But it still gives you that feeling of something that's alive. Um, the... Uh, the biggest thing I notice is when we're doing all these edges, you want to make sure they're nice and clean. Some of them are just a little fat and chunky, so we want to go back in with that gray and sort of clean those up in some places. Um, what was the other thing? Uh, oh, feedback color choice in the skin, yeah. Color choice-wise, yeah, I think it's fine. I mean, orange and blue are great together, so no issue there. Your composition's fine. Everything seems like it balances out. So, yeah, I, I have no issue with that. Um... Yeah, overall, I think that's that would be my feedback for you. So, you know, smooth out some of those flesh blends. You know, it seems like you're going for, like, the flat plate color with sort of an heavy metal edge highlighting style. So just if, if that's what you're going to do, then you've got to make sure your edge highlights are as crispy crisp as can be. They need to be extra crispy. Okay. All right, Alberto, uh, where should improve? Uh, sure. So the number one thing that jumps out at me when I looked at this fig earlier was the skin tones. Um, I like the green, but again, we don't have near enough, uh, near enough variation of hue or value, right? When I look at this and I see the value contrast, you can see how I don't, you know, this is all very, very, very much the same sort of flat gray. 
most of what we have is actually just the light reflection. Um, but more than value contrast, which does need to get pushed farther, we also need hue contrast. So again, with things like green skins, working in subtle pinks and purples and things like that, it'll also help tie it together with the rest of the mini since you have you know a purple outfit on and pink hair. Um, adding in more pinks and stuff into the skin in various places will help to balance out that shock of, of pink hair. The fact that she has long ponytails is doing some work. It's not completely out of balance because you do have a, still a little nice little triangle there. But working in some soft pink tones on the rest of the mini is going to also help that happen. Okay? All right. Hope that helps. Okay, next up. Rob, uh, a bit nervous first post. Be gentle. Very good. Um, first attempt at NMM, uh, fairly happy with the gold, but the steel looks flat. Sure. Um, yeah, so the steel looks flat because it's just black to white. So, um, I think the gold does need to come up a little higher and drop a little bit of the true yellow out. You are using a little too much like moon yellow in there and it needs to be more of an ochre color, but I agree with you. Your work on that feels better. The reason that the, the steel feels flat is one, we need to smooth out the blend some two, we need the integration of a color in there. It feels flat because it's not, steel generally isn't ever perfect. It reflects the color of the environment around it. Um, how sharply it reflects that has to do with how polished it is, but being uh, a naturally neutral tone, it will tend to take on the colors that are around it. If it's under a blue sky, it looks blue. If it's sitting over a brown earth, it looks brown, right? So um, with things like this, which look like clean, fresh, shiny stormcast, you probably want to focus on something like some soft blue glazes and that'll actually help you with smoothing those blends out well like right here this is rough 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 you know all those are rough um and that's okay because using an interference color like that blue as your last step will help to smooth out your blends in a much easier way with your very transparent paint and will also add a lot of visual interest to the mini so there you go hope that helps okay next up uh why is that? Why is that doing that? Go away, this thing. Thank you. Okay. Uh, looking for feedback on the skin and dress. Uh, went for pale skin with some pinks and reds to give it some light for the dress. Tried a velvety texture. Sure. So I think we still need to go farther on the skin, especially around the face. This is a very unusual miniature. She has a huge head vis-a-vis -vis her body. Um, so, like, probably still some more subtle, darker tones here, here. Um, and then more on the, for bringing the T-zone of the face into a line, right? Uh, and more more subtle colors in the face. I know she's a vampire, but it feels like she needs a little more. That, that one cheek is good. Mm. Yeah, especially up around her forehead. Like, this figure has such a pronounced forehead, it's really messing with my, my <laughs> ability to read it. Um... But, you know, that's, I think, what I would I would say there as far as the skin. It's good, though. I like the extra colors you have worked in. I like it a lot. Now, as to the dress, um, yeah, you need to go... I understand what you're aiming at. You need more lines. They need to be thinner lines. They need to go farther. So you're doing sort of the technique I showed here in the cloak video. Um, but the problem is, is that we're not carrying it on far enough. And we, like, right here on this these folds, you have, like, this much texture. This is the right one. These two work for me these don't okay so there you go hope that helps okay next up chris uh trying to working on blending a bit more so looking for feedback on that sure um yeah i mean i think we're our blending is oops our blending is okay um but i mean we still obviously it feels like uh your paint is still very thick um, we don't have a lot of cleanliness to it. We want to make sure things are separated. Like, what I would honestly work on more than worrying about blending is just getting your paint job nice and clean and separated. I have blue here on this white. I have blue here on this white. I have blue here on this white. You know, my face down on this blue. These pieces aren't separated. Like, my number one thing I would tell you to work on is just separating your paint elements and getting everything nice and separated and clean with your brush control that's going to be a lot more valuable to you in the long run than worrying about, you know, your exact blending at this time, which tends to just come as you become the master of your brush control and your paint. Now, that being said, you're not pushing the contrast very far here, so there's not too much blending to be had. Um, I mean, you've worked in pretty much, uh, of, and we can see that when we go over here to the black and whites, like, that's all the same. 
that's all the same. That's all the same, all right? Now you have this little light line here across the top. Um, it's a neat idea. It needs to be much broader of a highlight to feel like that. Now the actual blending on the back, I think is okay. But again, this is too thin of a volume for this light and it needs to be spread out more. The lights need to be more volumetric as to how they're falling on them. And we need to definitely, definitely increase the shades a lot. This guy is very flat blue. He needs a lot more shadow and definition of the various parts. So hope that helps. Okay, next up, Jamie. Uh, style leans on impressionism, and basically he wants to talk about that, right? Can this style be worked, or, you know, it, can it be done, and, um, you know, can it do well? Um, sure, it can do well. Um, yeah, you could, there are, there are people who've explored impressionism in miniature art before. It's very small scale, but I think you can absolutely do it. Um, my best advice with it is if you're going to go for that impressionism, which is cool, then we've got to go farther than this. We've got to start really bringing in some colors. Like you've got some subtle reds and stuff, but the impressionists weren't impressionists because they just showed their paint strokes, right? It wasn't that. Plenty of painters show their, their paint strokes, okay? But when we look at impressionist pieces, like famous impressionist pieces, right? What they're doing is they're using color in everything, right? And the colors are very much in each other's existence. Like, they're all mixed up in each other. You go, you're not going to find much black or white on, on, on this page. And you might say, well, yeah, but Vince, hey, there's some, isn't there some white down here in the clouds? No. No. There's, like, something that's gray, and there's something that's near or off, but a lot of it is still colored. Right, and then never mind when we look up something like oh, I know it moves the picture over here, but you know something like this, which is just done. This is all done in color, right? So if you're going to go for these kinds of of impressionist feelings, yes, I think you can. Uh, and I could it do it? Could it you know perform at other competitions? Sure, sure. I mean I don't. It's you do something good. A lot of competitions will recognize that, but you've got to really push that. Um, my advice if you're interested in this style is go look at everything from Craft World Studio. Um, their style very much aligns with what you're talking about. Okay? So get deep into Craft World Studio and really pay attention to how they're painting. Look at how they never use like black and white and just always use color for everything and unexpected colors. And, uh, and that will, will be a, a good guide for you on this journey. I think it's a really cool idea and I think you should keep exploring it. All right, next up, Andrea, um, Necron Overlord in a contest. Uh, I'd like opinion on the color scheme on the blade and the metallic armor and a general evaluation of the piece. Um, and he says, is there anything wrong with the picture every time I'm happy about it? I take a picture and then I'm not. Yeah, that's just what happens. Because you see it differently through a digital lens, one, so you notice flaws, and two, it exposes that you actually, you know, your blends aren't as smooth as they could be because it's under proper lighting and zoomed in and stuff like that. Now, as to the red metallic armor, yeah, I think it's fine. I think it works. I don't really have much feedback for you on it. I think it's okay. Um, the blade, I would give the same piece of advice I gave to Orange Blade, to Blue Blade, which is I need to go darker. So, you know, here, here, and here, we need to go darker. Okay. Um, now, as to the... Uh, what was the other question? I'm sorry. Um, color scheme. I think the color scheme's fine. You managed to pass the blue around a good amount right um the white like overall it's it's good it's not it's not grabbing me in any great way right what i mean by that is I, so i'm answering you like i would if i was a judge for a competition like it's fine um but you you know we've got lots more contrast we could be pushing here along this metallic armor there would be a sheen down this column and then shadows here and these edges could be catching light and you could be showing me a lot more natural texture. I could have soft shade on this white band, right? So like, it depends on what you're asking me to evaluate it for, right? Um, so my, my answer is there's a lot we could do. Uh, and I think basically that has to do with more contrast and, and heating of the various volumes on the thing with very uh, with varied color transitions and or, you know, catching things like edges brightly and stuff like that. So that's my best advice for you. 
Okay, next up, Cole. Uh, working on improving battle damage. Uh, sure. Uh, so your battle damage is... It doesn't go dark enough, these scratches, to have the light line in them. You also want to make sure any white line needs to trace the absolute bottom. You can't have brown hanging out the bottom of the piece. Um, so, you know, but these, when you're on like a red, these need to go dark. We need black in here at some point, right, to, to play the full contrast against this. Um, I like the weathering, and I like that kind of stuff. The scratches are mostly the right way, but, you know, you want to make sure that you've got some clear defined dark lines and then you can also work browns into them to show rust and then some clear defined sort of very light reds underneath so this also probably needed a glaze of red because you don't want to show like a white tear like a pure white tear directly on the red it's not the the red tear wouldn't what you're catching there what you're what you're doing with that is trying to catch the piece of paint that's peeled away how that light would catch it and it'll be brighter but it's not going to turn white Okay, so that's my best advice for you on the battle damage. All right, next up, Damien uh, painted up uh, Primaris Master. Um, would like some feedback on the NMM, the cloak, and any other general comments. Yeah, so my biggest thing with the NMM here is going to echo something I said earlier. It needs to be cleaner. So, like, you can really see when we zoom in here, you know, what's going on, right? We need it to be a lot cleaner like i need i need dark lines separating these wings i need these light these white lines to be nice and sharp they're not they're very like smudged painty right now um i need this to be smoothed out i need the line that traces the edge of the iron halo to be or whatever it's called um to be a nice clean sharp thin line so you know usually with that kind of stuff it's a matter of like doing the edge and then going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and back and forth right um now as to the uh so that's the biggest thing i noticed tone wise and, and value i think you're you're good you'd probably have a little more whites in a few places a little more number one but for the most part you're you're in the right place uh as to the cloak the freehand down here again needs a little bit of cleanup on this side you can see where you've got like a fat chunk there and a fat chunk there where it's you know we've got some fat fingering chunks there like things, it needs to look like a perfect thin red line, which means you got to come back in with your white and you got to stiffle around it and clean it up, right? Um, as to the back of the cloak and the texture, yeah, this works. Um, we need to, again, soften this out a little bit. We are jumping a little bit there, but for the most part, I like what, you're go what you've got going on there and I think it works. So there you go. Hope all that feedback helps. All right, uh, Eugen, uh, currently working on his Necron army. And, you know, it feels too monochromatic. Yeah, that can happen. So my biggest advice is, I'm going to tell you two things. One, follow GW's advice that they figured out with the new um, Necrons and take the joints and make them a different thing. Make them dark black, make them dark black brown, make them recess in some way, right? That's how they did all the, the new ones that they did. Um, second piece of advice is, you know, work more colors into the armor itself. You've got a little bit of green here flowing up and that looks cool. You could also just glaze in some subtle blues into the steel or something like that to have them reflecting the sky. And I think that'll really work. Sometimes that's all it takes, but we need more, more shadows, more contrast of value on the, the steel. We need to take control of the light and have that, those darker parts those matte areas um go look at richard gray's recent i mean he did it in gold but it won't matter the lesson still this is the same look at his gold nmm and that's what you should be you know like that's how you need to play shadows with tmm as well um but then as well glazing in colors can be a great way to make him more visually interesting so and there you are hope that helps Okay, so let's keep going. Next up, we've got Adrian, and uh, says he's trying out some true metallic metal on the Space Marines. Uh, wasn't aiming for a high level, just mostly trying to get the general idea down, looking what tips you could use to improve. Sure. Great. Uh, awesome. So looking for more of a tabletop. And so let's, you know, talk about mainly the steel. And I think what we need to do is uh, focus on a little more of the shadow. So, um, and, and a little more of like, uh, kind of building the, the highlights. So obviously, if you watch the sort of uh, speed painting with True Metallic Metals video I go through, I talk about how to 
create you know these volumetric highlights from with the brights you know the whole thing in steel black or black blue from below and then silver from above and i think that's what i just need to see a little more of um overall i think they're good you know you execute it on the metal it's got a nice sheen to it, it looks pretty smooth what i would say is uh if, you know if you're going for something tabletop a little bit of preset with that with your airbrush trying to get a little more shadow up underneath could go a long way toward stepping it up there so um that's my thought hope that helps Okay, next up, uh, Sam King. Uh, first time with non-metallic metal. Uh, and feedback, looking for that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, not bad. The I like the sheen across here. I think, you know, sort of three light catches is about the right number. It looks like we got most of the edges, so that feels pretty good. We could reinforce these top edges up here on the top of this piece a little stronger. Um, so that feels okay. Uh, looking at the helmet, I like the ridge along the eye. I think that works for me. That's basically a cylinder shape, so I'm good with that. And then, the, you know, the bottom of the stick. Uh, you know, overall, I think that's a, a pretty good piece. I think basically where you're wanting to refine your NMM is just in some smoothing. We could have a little bit deeper shadows and just some very hidden places, so not on, like, maybe the flats, but here underneath the skull or something like that. You know, you could bring it even a little darker, maybe in a couple of these very tight corners. Um, you bring up just a, a slight peak of a, of a tinier shadow. But for the most part, I think your main goal is going to be just smoothing. Overall, real nice looking uh, skink crease there. I think it looks great. All right, next up, uh, Jason. Uh, Archon for his Jukari. Uh, a lot of gray in the armor, so appreciating feedback as to whether his choice of location of red and green spot colors is effective in terms of composition. So let's look around this guy. It's a cool fig. Um, I think we need a little more red is my answer, um, right? I like the hand. I think that's pretty cool and clever. It's just probably, I know there's uh, a Drakari scheme that's like white and red or whatever. Um, the sort of desaturated purple blue color works fine for me. I have no issues with that. Um, that one's relatively well balanced out. That's no issue. What you got to worry about with red is red is so bright and powerful that it really like draws attention so you have to when you're and you're working in a saturated red as well so that you probably need to balance a little more um if you know if it was me i'd think about maybe uh you know something on the helmet that's red is what's really going to balance it out here maybe if there's a big like jukari symbol on the on the top of the helmet or something like that that would be sort of the way to go or maybe like some or you know red images coming in from or you know lines or something coming in from the edge of the show uh the chest plate as well, you know, something like that would probably bring it home there and really balance it out. So there you go, Jason. Hope that helps. Very cool, though. All right, next up, uh, Rich. Um, CNC on the bases for his, uh, for his stuff. Looking for sort of a forest theme. Yeah, so my biggest piece of advice is going to be, as I mentioned earlier, we've got a lot of foliage that isn't painted here, um, and that's what really jumps out at me. So I think what I would do is, and, and the rocks are just very slate gray. So what we need to do is increase our, our variation here, uh, our tonal variation of, uh, uh, you know, on, the, on, the, on all the bases. Um, I would drop some washes here and there around, just like get a big brush, get it sopping and start just dropping some wash in and, to, and let that completely dry. Then take a dry brush and kind of hit some of it with maybe an ivory or a pale sand hit some of the rocks, hit some of the plants, you know, just to show like sunlight and things like that reflecting through. Uh, that'll that'll go a long way. As to the rocks themselves, put some washes on of some colors like um, reds or purples or greens, you know, just kind of browns. Um, get some more actual color onto that gray. You can use some dry pigment if you've got it. Uh, but overall, I think they'll work. They're really cool uh, bases. I love the idea of sort of these, you know, jungle uh, Necrons with their, their you know, awaking in a, a tomb world that's mostly a jungle world. So I think that's cool. That would be my advice. All right. Next up, we've got uh, Raphael. Uh, some non-metallic metal for the first time and uh, fur texture. Sure. Lots of non-metallic metal. So, I mean, I've talked about non-metallic a lot in this review. And, you know, with the axe... It's okay. We need a little bit more variation that. And like I said before, you don't generally want to highlight near the very edges. You want to bring that more into this area and this area and then have it, you know, go more of a dark to light. If you've ever got the choice to go in two directions up to your highlight versus just one direction, always take the two directions. It's 
always going to be more visually compelling. Okay, so that's what I'll say there. Um, now, as to the fur texture, yeah, I mean, you know, fur is one of those things on a dog like this that's relatively smooth. You want to use, I have a video on painting horse fur. Um, give that a look, and that's going to be the way that you do this. Uh, effectively, what you're trying to do is you're trying to, um, you're trying to have just teeny tiny little hashes, hash, 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 lots and lots of thin lines, okay? Um, so that's, that's my best advice for you there. Uh, and I think that'll, that'll get you going in the right direction. So hope that helps. All right, next up, uh, Sang bringing us, uh, his latest white painting training. Yeah, sure. So this one's really interesting because I think there might be a little too, unless you just mean the helmet. The rest of him doesn't really feel white anymore. We almost have too much shadows. The helmet and the shoulder pad feel good. The leg, though, this is very exposed, and it doesn't feel like there's enough white. We kind of dropped below our 50% rule. I like where you're going with the shadows. They feel good, but they're a little... The volumes of the shadows are too big. So we need to wheel that back some. Unless, unless this is supposed to be totally black. I'm not sure what's supposed to be white. That's the problem, right? It should still be clear to me what's supposed to be very clearly white and what's not. If it's just the helmet and the shoulder that are supposed to be white, and you know, it's me not knowing the, the unit well enough to know that, then I'm perfectly okay with it. Great. Um, maybe a little soft, subtle shadow down here would do you well. But other than that, that's fine. If other things are supposed to be white, then we've we've shrunk in the volumes of the highlight just a little too much. So there you go. Can't wait to see what you do next. I love how this force is coming along. Okay, next up, Alice. Uh, Alex, sorry, Alex. Uh so, you know, how to improve this little guy. Yeah, I mean, well, it's always hard to improve on a figure that's this simple. Like, there's only so much you can do. Like, please don't ever put this in Golden Demon. <laughs> You're not going to... Putting in a tiny little drone, not your best answer. Um, you know, things I like are your little laser beam is nice. It's bright. I like the color around it. That looks really cool. Um, I mean, what we've got here is we need to panel line all the darks. Like, there are lines in these panels that aren't, aren't lined. We need to get more edges or lights or, or tonal variation, variation of hue on the red. Um, we need to do something with the flats here of whatever the, the this is. Like, whatever these are supposed to be, guns or something. I don't know. Like, they're too... I can't even... They need to be something. Like, shape them in some way besides just, like, some dark in there. So, like, uh, if these are supposed to be guns, then drill them and make them black. If they're not, then, you know, make sure they're cleanly wrapped around and put a little edge on them so they feel like they got that. The gray itself could use a little more edge. Um, the red over here, in addition to the edges, you would do well to put like some shadow over here. You got a big thing sitting on top. You can put a little shadow under there. Um, but just having some actual variation in the red is is probably largely needed. And then edges and stuff down here as well. Um, so yeah, I think that would be most of my feedback for you there on this on this little guy. Uh, cool piece though. I do love the the little little scarab drilling into him. That's that's that came out really well. So I think you did a great job there. All right, next up, Jim uh, with his, uh, his his llama kitty. Uh, looking for feedback on overall color choice, composition, and how well attention is drawn to the face and how to make the long fur tufts on his body a bit more interesting. Oh, hey, boy. Okay. I think the fur tufts are fine. If you want to stick, if you want them to stand out, then just make them the same blue color as you did this hair and this fur. I mean, that's the easy answer there, right? They should just slowly transition into this blue color. That'll make them stand out. Do you need to do that? No. Compositionally, he works fine. It's orange and blue. Always a good combination. It's slam dunk. This kind of orange and cyan is a, is, a, is a slam dunk color scheme. Always feels good together. You're in the right space there. Um, I feel attention is drawn pretty nicely to the face with uh, bright blue eyes. I think you could highlight the, the top edges of these horns a little more. You still want to keep them dark, but you could pick out the edges here um, just a little bit more with, with some subtle light to kind of create a little bit more of a halo around him. That could be one thing you could do. Uh, so, uh, but for the most part, I, I think that that's uh, kind of where I would go. So, uh, yeah, I mean, was well, there anything I missed there from your questions? Uh, da, 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 face, color choice. Yeah, yeah, there you go. It looks really great. I, I think he came out well. I like the transition of the pink socks. Um, my one note that I did notice from them is always make sure when you've got a bracer or something like this and you want to do some pink, carry it to the other side of the bracer so it doesn't feel like it's cutting off his circulation because that's what it looks like now. It looks like this is on too tight. 
and like his leg is all red from being swollen. That's just a little note. Whenever you're, whenever you have a dividing thing like this, you want to make sure you color. And you're, this happens all the time on chaos models where you want to transition. Like Slanesh models do this a lot. You want to make sure that you carry the color transition above the bracer, so that that way it feels like it's a natural part of it, and it the bracer isn't the the choke point. Okay, uh, but good stuff, Jim. All right, Jacob, uh, looking for feedback on the non-metallic sword, the free hand, and the faces. Sure. Um, so I've mentioned several things that goes right along with the non-metallic on the sword. Um, my answer is, you know, it, we need to smooth some of those blends out. They're very rough. You also, again, like I mentioned very much earlier in here, don't make all the volumes the same size. Like it shouldn't, every reflection shouldn't be exactly the same size. You're very like, duh, 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 duh. you know, lighting isn't like that. Light is very random and natural or in the way it bounces around. It's very difficult to, to, um, to have that kind of even thing down there. Now that's to the, um, the freehand and let's flip it around there so we can see that. Um, yeah, I think that came out really nice. I like the cloak pattern. I think it's solid. Uh, that's a that's a win. So I'm 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 about that. I love this kind of brocade patterning on on um, cloaks. I think it's fantastic. Now, as to the face, it's hard for me to tell. We don't have a lot of really close picture on the face, so I'm gonna have to say it's a little tough for me to read. Um, this guy just has like any. This guy also has a big face mask mask on. Um, they feel okay. It feels like, I mean, the guys on the ground, I think it's okay that they don't have a huge amount of uh, uh, attention drawn to them. With this guy, it feels like maybe we want to pop the highlights up a little bit and have a little color down here in the cheeks or something. But again, there's so little of the face to work with there, it's hard to say. So my best advice is uh, mix up your volumes, that is to say how wide the highlights and shadows are on a thing when you're doing the sword, and smooth out that blending. That's the big piece, I think, that would jump out at me if it was my number one. All right, next up, we've got Alex. Uh, general tips for areas to improve. Sure. So it looks like we took the Necrons and we kind of washed them here, and that was it. it. You know, we need to do more with that. I mean, I, I assume you're going to put bases on these guys. You know, pick out more details. Like, more needs to be painted here, okay? <laughs> like, we, we did it too fast and we stopped too early. Um, you know, like, these belts and these things should be painted. The, the little, their eyes should have a light. Their little gut uh, tube should have a light. You know, the gun itself should have some kind of lights to it. I mean, you know, look at the standard GW scheme, right? Like, you see the stuff that they paint, paint that stuff. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's not painted here. Um, when you don't, I wouldn't ever wash metal in general. I would go watch my videos on how to highlight true metallic metal. Um, but if you're going to wash metals, then you have to go back over and actually then relayer that afterward. Otherwise, you end up with just very, very dirty, boring looking steel that's very even. So we need to go back and recreate those highlights. So there you go. Hope that helps, Alex. All right, next up, Daniel. Uh, feedback on his finished go track and push and pull contrast. Yeah, so here's why it looks very flat, because you have way too bright of a light shining on this guy. This is a direct, like, this looks like he has a floodlight three inches away from him. Don't take pictures like this, okay? You need two diffused lights on opposite sides at a distance. This is... Like, it's good. This is blowing out every color you have, okay? Now, as to actual feedback, sure. I think I can still manage some. Like, the non-metallic gold is too yellow. It doesn't have enough 4 and 5, and it doesn't have enough 1. So, like, we need way more contrast of value there. Um, as to his skin, same thing. Um, his skin needs more. So, if you go and watch my How to Paint Ruddy Dwarf Skin video, I actually use Gotrek in it. And you'll see exactly what I'm doing there to, to create those volumes. Gotrek has a great musculature, um, so you can really make some great hay as far as capturing and, and uh, infusing those reds and purples uh, into the skin. So I would go watch that. Um, the tattoos look good. Uh, the hair looks good. I think that's got the right amount of contrast. You do want to pick out more of the beard, and you also want to make sure you're matte varnishing this kind of stuff out. I can see glossy reflections in the shade colors. Anytime that's happening, that's real bad. In the dark part, I shouldn't see light reflecting. That's the quickest way to make a paint job look bad. So you got to matte out those shadows, okay? So find yourself some ultra matte varnish or something like that and, uh, and go to town. So there you go. Hope that helps, Daniel. All right, next up, Mart. Uh, looking for some advice on... Uh, so for a future note, Martin, 
I'll, I'll review this one. This is for finished projects, not work in progress. Don't share me whips. Give me finished so I can evaluate, but I'll give it to you this time. Uh, red robes, tears on the shield, and the shield itself. I mean, the short answer here is we've got, and because it's whip, it's hard for me to evaluate. That's why I don't evaluate whips, right? Like, the red is very messy here. Are you planning to clean that up? I don't know, but hopefully. Um, the red is too flat. The red needs a lot more shade and a lot more highlight. Uh, like, it, as you can see, when I turn that gray, it's just, it's just gray, right? Like, that's all one color. Um, the tears on the shield, uh, there need to be more streaked, not just sort of kind of wet areas underneath, like the tears need to run down the face, um, if that's what we're going for. And we need, like, again, a lot more tonal variation on everything there. And then, uh, what was the other one? I'm sorry. What was the third one? Uh, oh, the shield itself. Yeah, that would be the other item. So, yeah, I mean, it just it just needs a lot more tonal variation in it. Like, the tongue and the tongue could be should have some texture and some lines, and the purple needs to have a lot more highlights and things like that. Like, all of that needs to be blown way up on, on contrast, right? So just, we need to spend, you should move on from your whip into really pushing the contrast of everything. And then, obviously, cleaning all this stuff up, because we've got a lot of paint where it shouldn't be between the red and the white and things like that. So, But I'll assume that's all clean up, since this is whip. All right, Jason, uh, Vallejo Air Paint, uh, working with Valle Air Vallejo to paint the armor and using multiple shades to add detail. Happy with the progress so far. Uh, whatever advice one has to be. So yet again, put your don't don't do this with your photos. Like you took a picture with a flash. Don't take pictures with flash. There's a very simple guide for taking pictures on the GW website. Go read it. Get a stable background. Set up, have a decent diffused lighting, not pointed directly at it. Turn off your flash. Take a picture. Okay. Um, all right. So that being said. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you're, you're doing a good job. Uh, it looks really nice. I think this is like, you, you know, understanding moving from the dry brushing, everything. This is definitely some good progress. Um, your work looks pretty clean, which I really enjoy. I think you're, it looks like you're doing a great job at keeping sort of sections nice and clean and separate here. I like how you've picked out all these parts. I think that looks really nice. Um, so you've got good brush control and a good stable base there. I think what you want to work on is basically just adding some more, uh, some more tonal variation. I mean, we need more contrast. That's going to be the simple answer here. The red, the green, the steel, everything needs more contrast. So my best advice is, yeah, you know, much in line with what I've said so far, more deeper shadows, you know, with greens, you can do a lot of things. You can integrate deep reds, and that's really a nice way to go mixed with your greens or with some subtle glazes of deep red. You can pop them up into highlights. You can go white green, you can go yellow green, you can go flesh green. Um, there's tons of options for highlighting green. So um, you can watch my Exploring Colors Green video and I break down all the different ways you can, you can highlight and shade green for interesting effect. And that's what, I would, uh, that's what I would push you to do. So there you go, Jason. Hope that helps. And with that, that brings us to the end of the month. So I'll say thank you very much, everybody. Certainly appreciate all the submissions this month. Great stuff. Uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you to everybody who, who did submit. Um, it's really, really wonderful to see all these models, to see all this progress everyone's making. Uh, I love watching uh, all of this progress. I love, uh, you know, being able to spend this time with you and review all these models. So thank you to everybody who submitted. Uh, sorry this video was late. I was traveling at the beginning of this month, unusually, but because of Labor Day. Uh, and uh, I, what I will say is, if you want to join us on your hobby journey, you can certainly do so. Link down in the description but as always thank you all and my final note will be if you're in the pmp you are the people who make this community great please keep staying positive you know and when you see something you really enjoy give it a like give it a comment tell people that you enjoyed it it can make their whole day you can change the entire tone of someone's day just by throwing a simple comment on there two seconds of your day can change someone's 24 hours of their day that's an amazing power we have here so keep sharing that positivity answering those questions helping out and uh, let's all be great advocates for the hobby. So thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate it. And as always, we'll see you next time.